tale as old as time. Hey guys, this is Jeremy here with my review for Beauty and the Beast. Sorry it's a little late, I went to see it a while ago, but I wanted to wait to see it with my girlfriend, who is a massive fan of the original animated film. And least to say, this film does follow a lot of the elements from the animated film. It even borrows a bit from the novel in which the original story is based on, as well as a little bit of elements of their own. But either way, this film does follow the core of the animated film. And that's a lot to live up to, considering that the animated film is possibly one of the most iconic Disney animated films they've ever made. There's very few that have such a high standard as this one. It's even got a award-winning musical that is still running and is still amazing. Cause I saw it a few years ago and it was great. Alan Menken was on a hot streak after already having worked on The Little Mermaid. He would then proceed to go on to make more award-winning music with Pocahontas and Hunchback of Notre Dame. So, least to say, Alan Menken, this was when he was at his prime, and they thankfully reused all of his music. They did add some of their own songs to it, but sadly to say, they don't even stand on the same platform as Alan Menken's music does. But the original music itself is still very well done. All the musical numbers are really well done. The Beauty and the Beast is absolutely fantastically done. Emma Thompson does a great job. Angela Lansbury still is the most iconic version for me. But Emma Thompson did a great job considering she had to keep this accent that her character as Mrs. Potts had in this version. And uh, the opening is... it's okay. The thing that I found that this film was trying to do is literally taking frames from the animated film and trying to bring them into real life. And this is going to sound like a really stupid judgment, but they're not as animated. In cartoons, people will move like on cartoon. They'll do stuff that normal humans can't do. And when you try and see that be brought on literally from frame to, to from frame to frame, and when you're trying to see that being brought on from page to frame, it just doesn't work well. And the opening musical number was really well done, but the whole time I'm like, I keep on seeing the animated. It just keeps on weirding me out. It was a weird issue. It's a really stupid issue. It's not something I'm going to judge the film on, but it was there the whole time. The thing I will judge though is Emma Watson can't sing, or at least she can't sing well. I'll say straight out here. I think Emma Watson is a cool person. I think she's a decent actress, but she can't sing. If she can, it's very minimal. She got auto-tuned to shit in this movie, and you can hear it very, very plainly. The fact that she said that she wanted to be in La La Land is absolutely hysterical because she would have never made the cast because you have to sing without the assistance of computers. So at least to say she's definitely not my favorite part of the film. If anything, she's probably the most forgettable part. The parts that I do remember are all of the servants of the Beast's castle. Cogsworth, Lumiere, Mrs. Potts. All of them are so creatively animated. Cogsworth's face is literally the cogs of a clock and I thought that was so cool. Ewan McGregor is really funny as Lumiere even though his accent breaks and he kind of goes Spanish a few times. Ian McKellen's great as Cogsworth. Mrs. Potts is fantastic. She's a great person to replace Angela Lansbury. The, the instantly I knew when they were making this movie I was like it, it better be bloody Emma Thompson. Back on Ewan McGregor though, I honestly, they could have hired a French guy to do it because that's what they did for the, at least that's what I think they did for the animated film. Why didn't they just hire the guy from The Artist? That makes the most sense to me. I enjoyed the musical numbers. Be Our Guest was really cool. The mu the magic is kind of taken a little bit over the, over the edge and it almost turns into a animated movie in terms of how the CG works. The CG is really all over the place. The Beast looks fantastic. Certain parts of the castle looks fantastic. Cogsworth is amazing. Lumiere is great. Potts is great. But then some aspects like when the costumes are being put on people, that was terrible. The kind of the the zoom outs the the pans and everything with 
Emma, Tom Emma, I keep on saying Emma Thompson, Emma Watson running through the castle grounds is really weird. However, there's two things that this film does that I really commend. One is it made her father a character. Kevin Klein's a fantastic actor, but we actually got more than just him being a big bumbling old twat. He actually had depth. We saw more of to his reasons of why they live there and why he is so protective of Belle. We see the past. We see her mother. That was cool. And LeFou. Now everyone's going on about all this gay shit and everything about his character being oh gay and whatnot. Really, I just got suggestive vibes, and even then, I still thought it was perfect. I always got that vibe, like you know, he idolizes Gaston. He probably likes the guy too. And Josh Gad did a great job as making LeFou a morally conflicted character, because. That's a part that appears later on in the film that I was like, wow, this actually is way smarter than I thought it would be. Speaking of Gaston, Luke Evans is fantastic because he did something that I never had really experienced with the character. I like Gaston. I'll admit he's a douchebag of a person, but just how he, the person who voiced him in the animated film had a deep, bellowing voice. And I liked him all the way up until the end. Oh, no, that sucks. Oh, well, he's a bad guy. He had to die. This one, I actually didn't like him at the end. I actually detested his character, and I thought that was cool that we actually were able to get over that hump. Yeah, Gaston's a terrible person, but I did like how we actually felt that in this movie. Uh, there's a lot of parts of this movie that work. The animation is good when it wants to be. Dan Stevens is great as the beast. The characters are good, except for Emma Watson. And there are a lot of other elements that work well. However, there's two really big issues, aside from certain people not being able to sing, is the length. This movie is two hours and nine minutes long. It's a story we already know. Does it really need to be longer? Do we really need these additional songs? Sure, I liked how we used this time to further establish Emma Watson's past, like with her family, her mom, and her father, but oddly enough, we don't really get enough time to really establish the romance between the two. It's really just three montages, and boom, they're in love. The other thing is the editing is choppy. There's a scene in which her father, Kevin Klein, is running around being chased by wolves and he slides down these rocks and he all of a sudden he lands on his horse, even though we clearly saw the horse run away earlier. So this happens throughout. That's just one example. There are a lot of elements in which kind of direction is lost and we see aspects of the film that just sort of drift away. They come back, but very sloppily. However, though, there's a lot of elements that do work in this film. It is very enjoyable. The music is great to see these things be brought to life. I'll still enjoy the animated any day over this movie, but I will admit that this is still a good recreation. It, is it one of the best ones that they've done so far? No, I'll say Jungle Book is still the best one. And even with that Christopher Walken, I want to be like you, you, you. <laughs> Either way, Beauty and the Beast is an enjoyable time, and while I may not have enjoyed it as much as other people will, I will admit that it is still a well-constructed film despite its flaws. So in the end, I'm going to give Beauty and the Beast a 5 out of 7. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. Sorry if I was lengthy, but I really wanted to talk about the aspects of what made this build good, what could have been improved, and I'm actually interested to see what they're going to do next. They've pretty much planned out all of their Disney movies. They're apparently even going to do a Prince Charming one. One they haven't talked about at all, though, is Pocahontas, and they're probably not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole because people get too pissed. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time.